As Apple says, change is in the air, and change the air they did. Just a year after the iPad Air splashed onto the scene, Apple has given us a thinner and more powerful tablet in the iPad Air 2. We of course are interested in all the new specs, but we're even more interested in seeing how it's put together. So we got our hands on one, and now it's time to give it the old iFixit treatment and tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the iPad Air 2. If you thought the original Air was thin, wait till you see the specs on the Air 2. From a design perspective, the Air 2 looks pretty similar to last year's model, but notable changes include the addition of Touch ID in the front and the removal of the rotation lock button that was previously located above the volume controls. The Air 2's height and width are the same as last year's model, coming in at 240 millimeters in height and 169.5 millimeters in width. But the real changes come in the depth, bringing the Air 2 from 7.5 millimeters to a mere 6.1 millimeters. For comparison, we laid it against the 6.9 millimeter thick iPhone 6. That is crazy thin. And the Air 2 even shaved off a few grams, weighing in at 437 grams. This isn't our first rodeo with an iPad, so we knew we would need to bring in the heat to get it open. Secretly, we were hoping to find some external screws after Apple proved it could make a tablet-sized device without glue in the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. But with heavy hearts, we headed over to the microwave to warm up our eye-openers. With the help of those hot eye-openers, we began carefully heating and prying the front panel up and away from the iPad. Even though the panel feels more rigid than in previous iPad models, we were cautious not to disturb the LCD. With the front panel off the iPad, we get our first look inside, which reveals a larger iPhone 6 Plus. Just kidding, but it does look similar. The display cables have been moved near the lower edge of the iPad, which is a welcome change since the previous version effectively booby-trapped two edges of the display. At the bottom of the front panel, we see something that is very reminiscent to the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, the home button, which has an easy-to-manage Touch ID cable, making its removal a snap. The display itself is a 9.7-inch Retina display that has a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixel density of 264 pixels per inch that now comes with an anti-reflective coating that Apple has claimed will reduce glare by 56%. Onwards and upwards towards the top of the iPad where we found the cameras. Both cameras came out of the case without a fight, so we took a closer look. First up is the 1.2 megapixel FaceTime cam that is capable of 720p HD video recording. And then we popped out the 8 megapixel EyeSight camera. While it's not exactly the same, it's extremely similar to the one found in the iPhone 6 Plus and a huge leap forward in quality over the last generations, which was only 5 megapixels. This baby is loaded with features, including an f2.4 aperture, 1080p HD video recording at 30 frames per second, slow-mo, and time-lapse video, just to name a few. After we removed a few odds and ends, we turned our attention to the logic board, which is glued in place. Not only that, but the lightning cable connector is still integrated into the logic board, meaning a broken lightning connector requires an entire logic board to fix. On the logic board, we see Apple's brand new 64-bit A8X processor, rumored to be a triple core 1.5 gigahertz system on a chip paired with two gigabytes of RAM. The M8 coprocessor, and the NXP 65V10 NFC module, which is the same one found in the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. We're hoping to get a confirmation of the A8X's specs shortly, and once we do, we'll update our teardown. As always, removing a battery from an iPad requires a lot of patience, and the iPad Air 2 is no exception. After a good deal of heating and prying, we finally got it off. Our Wi-Fi model came with a 27.62 watt hour, 7,340 milliamp hour battery that Apple claims will give you 10 hours of life with general use. This is a drop from last year's iPad Air, which had a 32.9 watt hour capacity. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The iPad Air 2 scored a 2 out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the battery is still not soldered to the logic board. While the LCD and front panel are now fused together, it does simplify the opening process. But on the downside, the fused front panel increases cost of repairing a cracked screen and increases risk of damage to the LCD when opening. Just like in previous iPads, the front panel is glued to the rest of the device, greatly increasing the chances of cracking the glass during a repair. And finally, gobs of adhesive hold everything in place, making all repairs more difficult. 
For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at iFixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash iFixit.